Today, we're looking at a green ink by Roja and Klinger, Document Green. As always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, it would really help me out if you check out the entire video. Hi, I'm an ink guy. If you like green inks, you can check out the playlist that I'm going to put right here. There are three papers used to standardize the writing samples at least a little bit. Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. Let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Clairefontaine. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer some shading in some spots. You see how Klinger starts a little darker, works its way a bit lighter, and the and symbol much darker than the rest of what's around it. The extra fine is just a tad lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, decent shading throughout, not tons, but decent. Look at how much darker the K is, how the goes from lighter to darker. 10 seconds to dry. The medium is about the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, still really good shading. Look at that the, starts lighter, works its way much darker. Quick goes from dark to light to dark. 17 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both far left to far right do show good color variation and we do get it in the writing. But the smear says if I was to smear while I was writing, I probably would not be able to recover it. To make sure there's a range of experience with this ink, the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159, a Jinhao X450, and a Jinhao X750 with a 1.1 medium and extra fine nib. Then a Lamy All-Star with a fine nib is inked up and used for a day, then used to take the notes for this video. Now let's look at the second writing sample done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no real ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, small spots of shading that are occurring but only a few of them. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, still small spots of shading that through, show up throughout the writing but not tons, not real standout, 18 seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, the same kind of shading that does show up throughout this writing, not tons, but when it's there, it's really nice, but 29 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show us color variation left to right, which we got, and the smear test, again, if you were to smear it while you were writing, you probably couldn't recover it. I agree with Vita that there's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. We put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And you see that this really flees immediately up the page and starts to gather. We get that nice dark line at the top. There is a marked top and bottom of the lighter green line that's at the bottom of this chromatography showing that perhaps it was going to try and stay in place. Now the one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before dunking it into water. And you see here that it is fully bonded with the paper, showing that we expect a lot of resistance from this ink. Up next is the third writing sample done on 80 GSM Rhodia paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer spots of shading, more than we got with the Tomoe River, about what we saw on the Clairefontaine. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, nice shading, much more noticeable than it was throughout. You see some of that shading coming in on every single word. 12 seconds to dry. Now the medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread halo sheen. Very nice shading, a little bit better than we've seen with some of the others. Like look at quick, starts dark, gets much lighter, gets darker again. Brown starts light, goes to a nice mid-tone to light to dark again. 21 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us good color variation and we are getting it in the writing. But as before, if you smear while you're writing, you're probably not going to be able to recover it. 
Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles itself very well. Once it's allowed to bond with the paper, it is not budging at all. That would make this very safe to use in a note-taking situation. No problem, just give it a moment to dry first. Water, it's not budging off the paper. Not a bit, although it only took water to get it out of my pen. Pen flush is starting to break it up, but just a little bit from the surface. Most all of it is still there. And the one-third bleach solution, strangely, is having no effect on it at all, despite what Pen Flush managed to do. The paper for the additional writing samples is changed up in order to get additional experience with this ink on different papers and more experience on different papers in general. The first paper we're going to take a look at is going to be the Yellow Rhodia, and this is to see what kind of tone change the ink will have when it has a yellow background. When we look at them side by side, we can see that it does lighten it up just a little bit, but it still maintains being very much a green. Now, all of the other performances are truly the same. Nothing else has changed other than seeing that the tone itself has been lightened a bit. For the inks tested, there is an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Roher and Klinger's Document Green has a viscosity of 1.41, making this a very wet ink. If you're interested in how the viscosity is tested and how the bell curve is created, then there will be a link to a video here. The next writing sample is done on black and red paper. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen. It does have some very nice shading that's going on. Look at how in Roher it's going from uh, medium tones to light tones to mediums to lights back and forth a lot. It shades very well with that stub. The extra fine is a little lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer quite a bit of decent shading, not super dark when it gets darker like the K in quick, but definitely darker than the rest of the word. Five seconds to dry, so a very good ink on this paper for students. Medium is just about the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, some decent shading that's occurring. We see how the goes from darker on top, lighter through, and much darker at the end. Quick does the same thing, dark to light to dark. Very nice. Six seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for the medium shows almost no color variation, although we got plenty. The extra fine does show good color variation, and we did get good color variation in the writing. As is before, if you smear this while you're writing, you're probably not going to be able to recover it. To find the average dry times, the writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper are averaged. For the inks tested, the average dry time is 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Roher and Klinger's Document Green has an average dry time of 18 seconds, putting it right in normal. Just a little bit slower than average, but still normal. The last writing sample is done on white lines paper. Now we see here we get a ton of bleed spots all over the place in the regular writing. Stubs, extra fines, mediums, the lines on the bottom, all over the place. Just too many to truly circle. So it doesn't touch the page underneath, but it does perhaps make the back of the page unusable. It's not really ghosting though, which is very nice. The 1.1 has minor feathering. If you look at what's going on with the word document, just around the edges a little bit. It looks just a little bit woolly. No spread, halo, sheen. Moments of shading, just tiny moments, like the bottom of that line in the overlap of the K down, but not really enough to worry about. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub with no feather, spread, Halo Sheen, it does have moments of shading, again, a few more, bit more standout than what went on with the stub. 
two seconds to dry, so super fast drying for students. The medium is about the same tone as the extra fine in the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, still bringing some of the shading through. Look at how quick goes a little bit darker to lighter to a little bit darker. Three seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both show us good color variation and we are getting it in the writing. The smear says if you smeared this while you were writing, you would still be able to use it. So just don't use a stub or a super wet pen on this paper. Instead of finding inks that look like Roharing Klinger's document green, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a nice red ink and I chose Ackerman Dutch Masters number 12 because I do like how red and green go together. There will be a link to Ackerman Dutch Masters number 12 right here if you want to check out that video. In case the complement color that I chose is not to your liking, there's also links to all of the color playlists down in the description. So what do I think of Roher and Klinger's Document Green? Everything it might lack in its shading, it makes up for in its performance. It's the resistance you use this ink for and it works outstanding. It's a pleasant green tone and it works really well, especially given the right pen and paper for a student. So what nib and pen would give the best writing experience with this ink? I really think a dry fine is all that's needed because this is a get the job done type of an ink. And that's what we're using it for, get that job done. But sometimes you may need some different colors in some of the work you use. Let me know if you have to use green for anything in your work and that permanence matters. I hope you got something out of this video and be sure to come back tomorrow to check out Pen BBS number 217.